Okay, earlier today somebody asked me how you import a flow into your ManyChat account and make it work <clears throat> with a flow that you've purchased or bought from somewhere. So I'm going to kind of show you how it's done. It's kind of hard for me to share it to myself, so I'm just going to go step by step for a minute and show you what happens and how you fix the problems. So once you get a flow, and it will show up in your folders here. I'll show you some that I have imported. Like here's an imported flow <clears throat> that I have. And it's, this is a quiz. And this flow has a ton of tags. And it has a ton of tags and it has a ton of custom variables. So you have to go back and reset all these tags to what they were supposed to be in the original flow or these conditions. And if you don't know what those are, that's what makes it difficult to do this. So usually, like this flow that I got here, and I don't remember who I got this from exactly, but they did a really good job <clears throat> is they went through here and they tagged or they they showed what these fields should be coming from these buttons and i don't know why there's always a glitch with the mac sometimes and that that's the thing so i'm going to go back to my flow that i have here and i'm going to share it with everybody and then if you go through and you want to make it work for yourself and you have trouble you just have to let me know and i can show you how to fix it and once you've fixed one then you'll know how to fix them all and it's not that hard Okay, so we're going to go back up here to my flow. We're going to open it up. I'm going to edit it. Now, this is what it would look like before I shared it to you. So, when I share it to you, it, it'll basically look like this, except for the problem is, is all your user inputs, your tags, are going to be blank. So, you have to look at these tags, look to see where they're coming from, and then rename the tags to whatever you want those tags to say. And you have to go step by step and find every single tag and realize what they're doing. So whoever you get the flow from, if they don't give you the instructions or tell you what to do, you're going to be really lost. It's going to be really difficult. And that's why I just like to write them myself. That way I don't run into this problem. But for you guys, so this is this flow. I'm going to share it to you. And then I'm going to show you how it works if you want to go and make it work for yourself. So what's happening in this is a quiz. And what's happening in this very first step is I'm tagging people so I know if they played the game or not. Then it's going to come and ask a few questions. And I want to keep score. I want to keep track of how many questions that they got right and how many they got wrong so I can figure out their percentage of right or wrong answers at the end. So when I come to my first tag, <clears throat> and I'll show you on this button here. So the, so the first question, true, is actually the wrong answer. So I'm going to set a tag here, and I'll show you how I did it. I'm going to set a custom subscriber field. And I'm going to make that field called score. I'm going to set the number. And I made the value zero. So if they were to choose that, they would get a, a total of zero points. Okay. Now, on the correct answer, which is the other tag, I'm going to set this, the same field, score. I'm going to set the number to 10. So 10 is going to be what, how many points you get on the first correct answer. Okay. Then in my next step, <clears throat> I want this, this flow to possibly be easy or hard. Not everybody to get the exact same thing. So I put a split test in here and I split my traffic. 60% go down, 40% go up. And so I come down here and ask another question. And again, the right answer is, is 32. So I put in this tag. This tag says to 
increase the score by 10. So you can increase or decrease a number with these custom fields. This is how you do that. So once again, I made the, the custom field score. I increased the number by 10. Now you can, this drop down, you can increase, decrease, or you can use a formula. And I chose to increase, so that would increase their score. And the same with this. So I tagged every correct answer was increased by 10, and every incorrect answer I didn't put a tag in at all. And then farther down the line, I added in more split tests, made different choices, so some people get one choice, some people get the other. Then when you get down here to, to the end, I'll show you the last tag that you need to set up to make this work properly. Is after the last question, I'm coming back here and I'm going to have it look for a total. So the first tag that I gave it, and I, you could put these both on one tag, but I did it separate so I could show it to you easily. So right here I took this, the, the custom field now, and I know that I have eight questions. So I set the custom field, and I clicked instead of adding or decreasing, I used a custom formula. Okay. And how you do that is this little drop-down guy right here will give you your fields. So whatever custom fields you had in this flow, that will give them to you right there. So custom field is score. So at this point, the score would be, if they had 8 right, would be 8 divided by 8 which would be one. So then what I wanted it to do is I wanted it to give a percentage of how much right or how many wrong that they had. So I went to the next field another and added another tag, set the subscriber the score, which this is this tag here is figuring out the score and setting the score. So this would have set the score to 10 because that would have been the correct answer. And then this one here is going to take the score, use another custom value, and I went score times 10, which would make that 100, and that would be 100%. So then I moved along, and I came up here, and in this field right here, I put in that custom field so it would tell them, here is your score 100% or 87%, whatever it was. Okay, then it's going to drop down here into this condition. And what I wanted to do is if somebody got a score more than 70 points, then, or 70%, excuse me, I was going to give them one thing. And if they got less than 70, I was going to give them another. So I put in the condition, and the condition is. It has to have all the following, so it can't contain just some of them. So score is less than 70, and that's the condition that, that you can do. So you can do these math formulas, right? So I said score is less than 70. So if that number back there came out, the math came out to be less than 70, it would say that's a true statement. If it's a true statement, it would go over here to this flow, yes, and it would give this response. If the score was more than 70, this would be false. So then it would go down here and you would get this flow. And then I went one more step and I like to do this at the end of my flows so it gets people back to where they might want to go, is I put in a home button. And this home button takes them back to my welcome message. So I'll just do this one time real quick. I'll just delete this and show you how I did that. <clears throat> we'll just pull up from home. We'll get down our drop down buttons here and I'll say go to 
and it'll say select a flow and I'm going to choose my welcome message and make sure that it's the one that I want it is I select this flow publish and everything should be working so it all published okay and now this bot is working and that's how you would go and redo a bot once you import a flow so remember if you import a flow every tag has to be changed every custom field has to be changed and it all has to match what the original the writer of the flow was thinking at the time so importing a, a bot sometimes isn't the easiest thing in the world to do but it can be done and I learned how to do it um, on some crazy hard ones that drove me nuts to figure out how to fix it I did finally and that's when I went to the finally to the case of I will just I'll look at their flows and I'll see how they laid them out and get an idea then I just go map them out sometimes I'll use a piece of paper and a pen and I map them out and then I go and write them and that's the easiest way to do it so I am going to post this video and I am going to also post the uh, I'm going to post the link to share this so you guys if you want to go in this isn't a hundred percent finished it does work fine um, I want to add some more questions and do some other things um, maybe in another video I will show you guys if you want say somebody came into this step right here and instead of choosing one of these buttons they typed in the right answer they typed in before during or after they type they typed that in which would break the bot because it would it wouldn't know what to do because it's it's expecting there's it doesn't say down here to go to another step so it doesn't know what to do and then say later on i have a sequence and i say to them hey you were playing this game were you able to complete the game and if they say no they weren't able to complete the game then I could say, okay, maybe you type something or whatever. Would you like to finish it? Well, if I was going to do that, I would have to come up here in the beginning. And I'd have to put in conditions that say that if a user was tagged at a certain point, that I want him to go back to that point. So I may do that in the, in the future if there's requests for that. Um, it'll take me about 20 minutes to, to build it and to do an explainer on it. And I'm happy to do that for you guys. And also, anything else, if you have questions about how to build stuff or, or what's going on or you need any help, um, just drop me a link and I'll, or a quick question. And I'll, if I know how to do it, I will help you. And I know how to do quite a bit of this stuff, especially with Zapier and all kinds of things like that. So um, I appreciate you guys being in my group, and I hope this helps. Bye.